What's up guys, this is Dark Magician here and welcome to another KO app video. So guys, I'm sorry for the delay in this video, I've been having some problems in you know, my personal life but uh, I just didn't want to delay uh, the video any longer, so just decided to, to make it today. Okay, now as you guys know, the next boss is Cutie Terry as expected. Well, actually some people expected her this early but others might uh, ha have said that she might come after Mizuchi or something like that. But anyway guys, uh, we still have no idea how she's gonna come. I mean, I've seen a lot of people asking like, is it gonna be in this back to school event that's gonna, gonna be here in a few days? Is it gonna be in a limited draw just as usual or not? Now here, honestly, we do have no idea because it's all possible. I mean, they did post the events up to September 3. Uh, so this means, they do, they, this doesn't really mean that she's gonna be in the uh, back to school event. Although it's possible, maybe we can exchange for her fragments over there or something. But still, I mean, since the events are only up to September 3, then it's possible that when they update the events, maybe she will come in September 4 or 5 or 6, you know, along with the bandit, just like every month. So yeah guys, until then we really can't uh, can't tell anything. But anyway guys, so today's character introduction will be for Cutie Terry. Okay guys, Cutie Terry or also known as Terrico is a is an API 15 DPS as you, as usual if you can see the stats, you would see a good crit rate and a very high crit power rate. That's actually a feature for all DPSs basically. They do have a high crit power, so definitely should try to make good use of it and the other stats are basically low or moderate now the feature says bursting power and mighty dps fighter now bursting power because she is able to accumulate power and then in a way unleash them or she can gain effects up to the power that she accumulates and mighty dps fighter because while well, she is known as one of the best dps fighters if not the best okay uh, we're gonna talk about the dps fighters uh, in, at the end of the video basically okay now starting with the fates First we have cute and adorable, we need cutie Terry, Caddy Leona and Momoko increasing attack plus 25%. Terry Terry, we need cutie Terry, Terry 03 and Terry increasing attack plus 25%. And gender doesn't matter, we need cutie Terry, Terry, Gennett and Geniko increasing attack plus 25%. Now honestly her gate or her fates are kind of challenging because here you're gonna need Caddy Leona and here you're gonna need Geniko. But on the long term hopefully her gates will be possible to be unlocked. Okay and her weapon power cap and she uses beauty badge and street fight tom. Now going to her fight soul it's called the wolf and bear soul which means that she gains 115 rage initially and restore extra rage when attacking so it's a combination of a bear soul and a snake soul as well okay two in one as usual now let's go to her skills so first her passive power jazer improve on small skill resistance and ultimate resistance decrease the rage of the target who is hit by cutie terry this is actually new because even the normal attacks with the normal attacks she can reduce the rage of uh, the opponent fighter instead of making him gaining rage she can actually make him uh, reduce his rage so it's pretty cool when a fight begins cutie terry will be immune to death three times so she will be immune to three times if she received a fatal hit up to three times she can simply resist them she won't die okay and the effect will last for the whole fight and for each female fighter on own side cutie terry is excluded of course the chance of immunity to death for cutie terry will be added once and twice at most so let's say if you do have two females other than cutie terry in your team then she can withstand or she can resist death or a fatal hit up to five times now here guys i do need to mention something in her lake element after her second gate is unlocked the female eight fighters are actually included as well so that if you do have a uh, female as an 8 fighter or as a striker uh, she can be included as well so don't worry if you do only have one female or no females at all uh, in your main team as long as you do have another one in the strike as a striker then it should be fine uh, now yeah moving on when cutie terry is deployed she will accumulate the power twice per round we did say that she accumulates power in a way so she can accumulate two layers okay of power per round and she can have a maximum of five, five iterations or five layers of power effect. Now we're gonna talk about them of course. The power will disappear after Terry with the power blast effect for two rounds and Cutie Terry will need to accumulate the power again. So she can accumulate up to five layers of power and once she reaches the final stage of the power or the fifth layer of the power which is called the power blast, 
for two rounds she will need to start accumulating again so she will lose all those uh, buffs let's say or all those uh, accumulations and she will start to accumulate all over again so the special effect or the specific, the specific effect for different accumulated times is as follows so when she accumulates power once increase on attack and defense by 20 percent and it's called the power load effect she gains the power load effect and increase the rage restoration speed by 25 percent so that's only at one layer with two layers increase on crit and anti crit by 20 percent with three layers she increases her own ultimate damage by 20 percent and it's called here the power burst effect and restore the 150 rage when attacking at four times she increases her own crit damage by 25 percent and finally at five layers she will increase her own ultimate damage again by 20 percent and gain the power blast effect the one that we've mentioned earlier each attack will deal an extra damage that is equal to seven percent max hp of the target which of course it's it ignores the immunity to debuff and restores on seven percent of hp so with the power blast no matter how much damage that she does uh, to the opponent she will deal an additional 7% every time even with the normal attacks and she will heal them uh, you know as HP for herself so guys you just need to know like let's just memorize the names at one layer it's called the power load or she will gain the power load effect at three times she, gain, she gains the power burst effect and at five times she will gain the power blast effect simply because they those names will be uh, mentioned elsewhere in her skills okay so as you can see she does accumulate power and it's mostly damage oriented she as the more she the more power she accumulates the more damage she can make later on now if there is only q deterry on own side at the beginning of the turn like in tournaments for example q deterry will gain the power blast effect so directly she will gain the power blast effect at once and in this round q deterry will be immune to rage decreasing effects so she, she can't have her rage reduced in this round and HP will be restored in each subsequent round and she will restore HP in every round such that the HP restored is equal to 10% of her max HP plus 4% times the power level like the power level it can be from 1 to 5 so 4% times five let's say if it's if she have reached the final power so at most she can restore up to 30 percent hp every round which is amazing i mean restoring 30 hp of her max hp every round is is a lot okay until the end of the battle this effect won't be activated if cutie is the only fighter who is deployed at the beginning of the battle of course in tournaments this hp restoration effect can't be triggered because it would be seriously op i mean it would be too much uh in case of tournaments so as you can see guys at level 1 she decreases 50 rage of the target of course as you level the skill up it can go higher and she increases her own small skill resistance and ultimate resistance by 25% again at level 1. It's cool guys because the much you know as you've seen she's really damage oriented but this, at the same time her passive can guarantee some resistance for her for skill resistance and ultimate resistance as well so she's kind of like balanced in terms of offense and defense although mostly you would like to use her as an offense position now we're gonna talk about that at the end of the video as well and well now moving to the minor skill the burn knuckle attack a column deal an extra 30 percent damage to the main target reduces the target's rage restoration speed by 30 percent and add the power diffusion mark to the target for two rounds here the power diffusion mark i'm gonna upload a screenshot to show how it is it's simply as you can see a white circle below uh, the opponent so that's the power diffusion mark it's like a mark i mean we're we're used to marks like melee like vanessa like ralph i mean almost everybody put marks now but anyway and restore 150 rage to two random allies such that the priority will go to the front row fighters so she can restore 150 rage to two random allies but in case let's say the front rowers don't have full rage then they will be the ones that will take uh, the rage first okay so it's a simple uh, skill now finally her ultimate buster wolf attack a single enemy attack the target with the power diffusion mark first the one that we've mentioned in the skill so she will target those those ones first increase on damage and resistance rate by 20 percent for two rounds and if the skill hits the target with the power diffusion mark she will make 20 percent splash damage as well so basically most of the time she will be dealing splash damage because most of the times you will have opponents with this mark uh, on them okay an extra cooldown effect will be added according to its own power as follows so here we did mention the names of the buffs that you will get we said the power load the power burst and the power blast 
So if you guys remember at the first layer of power called the power load, this attack has 50% chance to ignore the target's block and resistance, which is pretty good. Okay, but the cooldown on the other side is that she reduces her own skill resistance and uh, ultimate resistance by 10% for one round and it cannot be dispelled. So here guys, they kind of made her balanced in a way. I mean, let's let's be honest. I mean, putting buffs and buffs and buffs to a fighter without any small cooldown, I mean, it would be OP. So this way they did reduce her resistance in a way, just, just a minor thing. I mean, 10% isn't much and it's only for one round. But as you can see, it's mostly damage oriented and not defense oriented. Okay, now at three layers where she gains the power burst, when she makes an ultimate, have when she has the power burst, and when she makes an ultimate, this attack ignores 30% of the target's defense as well. So she will ignore 30% of the target's defense. The cooldown will be that she will reduce her ultimate resistance and skill resistance by 30% this time. And if she had the power blast effect, she will deal an extra 20% damage, which is pretty good, ignore the immunity to debuff as well, and reduce the target's healing rate by 50% for one round, such that again the attack ignores the immunity to debuff and cannot be dispelled. So that's pretty good as well. And of course the cooldown as usual, she will reduce her own skill resistance and ultimate resistance by 30% and it cannot be dispelled. So you've seen guys the effects like whenever she has, I don't know, one layer or three layers or five layers, she will uh, make an additional thing, okay, or an additional buff depending when she makes the, the ultimate. But at the same time, she will have a small cooldown which reduces her, resistant, her resistance a little bit, okay? Now, after her weapon awakens and the effect will be improved, of course, the numbers will improve and everything. And in addition to that, a small skill will be released this round. So whenever she makes an ultimate, she will release a skill for sure, which is pretty important as well. Okay, guys. So yeah, that was it regarding her skill set. Now, uh, before we get started with the other stuff, I need to mention her gate partners, which are Terry, Terry03 and Geese. Now here, it's really rare to see uh, gate partners with two API 14s and not only one, but it isn't really a big problem because we still get a lot of API 14 fragments, so you should be able to get those API 14s to 5 star and unlock to, to the lake elements if you want to unlock uh, Cutie Terry's smacks later on, okay? It needs time, of course, but you know, you can just consider it whenever you can. So yeah, guys. Now, uh, the question is, of course, is Cutie Terry a good fighter or not? Uh, let's talk guys about her being a DPS, she is an amazing, amazing DPS, honestly guys. I mean, overall she does have a cool kit, a lot of ways to improve her damage basically, I really need to focus on her damage because that's like her thing, she's, she's there just to make damage. And at the same time you've seen that she can resist death or resist a fatal blow up to 5 times, which is really good as well, and she does have means to regain HP and everything, so she is definitely a balanced fighter. And definitely a good one to consider now uh, front or back of course in this case I would recommend her in the back position because you do want to improve her uh, damage as much as you can and try to put her at the sixth position if you can in the last position because you've seen her passive she can reduce the rage for the opponent uh, even with the normal hits so that's definitely something to consider if you can just try to put her in the sixth pos position it would be great as well now uh, in which teams should you consider her? Now here it's not really a possible question because most of the players, if not all of the players, will be shifting to the Mizuchi meta or the Mizuchi formation once he arrives. I mean, let's let's be honest, we won't be seeing any more Genesis or any more Four Souls teams, not as much as before. And for the ones who don't know the Mizuchi formation, it consists, or to be activated, it sh you should have at least one DPS one tank and one gank for the passive to be activated okay like uh comparing it with the four souls you you needed to have four different souls here you, you need to have three different types of fighters which are dps tank and gank so here the question is which dps should be used or what is the best dps to use in this case now let's talk short term we're not gonna talk about a year ahead or something i mean for now and the time being uh the four best dps fighters would include Chion, Terry. Clark and Mature. Those four are the, let's say, maybe the only DPSs that we will be having for this time. Now we can exclude two from the best ones which are Xion and Clark. Those ones won't really 
uh, stay or let's say they won't really serve that much uh, later in the game but on the other hand Curatory and Mature are better DPS's if you want to consider I would really recommend considering one of them either Curatory or Mature or even both it would be fine as well uh, but yeah those those two DPS's are definitely better than the than Chion and Clark so definitely Curatory is a great DPS to consider uh, you know, if you put her in a female team, uh, in a way she can gain buffs for, for being a female, so that's actually an additional thing as well as, I've, as I always mention about that. Okay guys, so uh, yeah, that was it regarding the Cutie Terry's skills. Now let's go to the runes, I think it's obvious which runes should we use for her. So definitely because she's a bear and she can make an ultimate on round 1 and because she's a DPS, so definitely I would recommend Killing Soul guys, definitely I can recommend Killing Soul. Uh, because well she makes an ultimate on round one and killing soul basically is all about uh, improving her crit and making her do more damage when she does a crit so definitely it would be the best choice the other possible choice would be wolf's anger as well a third possible choice actually would be four killing soul four runes of killing soul and two wolf's anger soul now usually usually it's not really good to do some mixing but in this case, it's okay. I mean, just check out the last, um, the last part of the killing soul. I mean, if attack has been blocked, then the next round will get additional 20% crit and pierce. But let's face it, guys. I mean, she most likely won't get her uh, attack blocked because, especially after her gates, she will ignore the blocks and resistances. So this this passive or this last part of the killing soul won't be activated. Actually, you won't really benefit from it. So that's why I would really recommend putting two, uh, sorry, four killing souls and why not put two wolves anger or two dragon tiger to boost her base attack because that's another thing that you need to work on. Usually for DPS's you need to consider the crit rate and the attack, okay, those, those two stuff are the most important thing. So those are the three options that I've mentioned, full killing soul, full wolf ang wolf's anger or a combination of four killing soul and two wolves anger uh, runes. Okay guys, so that, that was my recommendations. For her and finally the fifth fight soul basically we do have only one fight soul which could be possible for her which is the uh, war god simply because war god in increases the crit rate for that fighter making her actually do more damage if she hits a specific target the one that uh, that has the effect of shrinking uh, where is it here the one with the god uh, god influence uh, she will be dealing more damage to this uh, to this specific fighter, but it doesn't really matter much. Other than that, there isn't any specific fight soul. You can give her a fight soul that causes debuffs or anything. It's not really a big deal. Okay, guys. Uh, just a fun fact for the ones who don't know about her gates or the ones actually waiting for her gates. Her smacks in specific, guys. Once she accumulates five layers of power, once she reaches the last effect called the power burst effect, I remember. Uh, she will be able of course now she will make an ultimate if she doesn't kill anybody with the ultimate then she will make another ultimate I think you've seen her doing two ultimates consecutively so yeah this is the case guys if she has the five layers and she makes an ultimate and if she doesn't kill anybody with this ultimate then she will make an ultimate again so definitely guys she's a good fighter to consider for now and for the, for the long term she's a good fighter to smacks as well and definitely a very powerful DPS so yeah guys this concludes my character introduction for Cutie Terry. I hope you enjoyed the video and in case you do have any question or any suggestions just as usual let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.